Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series in Baltimore. I'm Nick Miller alongside Gerard Fabiano. How you doing, How sir? you doing, Nick Miller? The people's champion, always playing the decks that you choose. We wrote about it this week. Yep. You've got an awesome looking Esper deck here. I don't even know what to call it. We're going to call it mid-range. Sure. Just because we're running out of names at this point yeah. in the standard format. Yeah, definitely an Esper mid-range type deck. I wrote about it on Star City Games, and a lot of you guys actually commented on it. And I, I took some of your input, and I tested it last night. Made a few changes, but the base is definitely the same. Now, last time we were in Baltimore, you did the same thing. You played what the people wanted. Yeah. We deck teched. You won the tournament. Yeah, it was salt time. I mean, this time, I don't know if I'm going to win the tournament. It's it's definitely tough, but uh, I'm going to try my best. So, yeah. Not with that attitude. you right. got to say we're going to well, win. Well, I'm definitely going to win. So, <laughs> you know, fast forward 20 hours from now, Nick's going to be like, yeah. congrats. So. Handing you a sixth trophy or whatever. Yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the deck here. Sure. Not quite a control deck, even though you've got Planeswalkers. But the thing that draws my eye immediately you have Seeker of the Way and Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, in the same deck. Yeah, there's definitely a wide gap. You're starting on basically turn one with Thoughtseize, and you're going all the way up to uh, turn eight with Ugin. Ugin was a new addition to the deck just because I know there's going to be a lot of Abzan mid-range decks. Uh, but the main purpose of playing Esper mid-range with some of the early creatures rather than Esper control is that there are a lot of like you know red-green dragon decks or mono-red you know, really aggressive, weenie-type strategies. And if you're playing cards like Dissolve, you're definitely going to lose those decks or at least be a huge underdog. But now when you're able to play like a Seeker on turn two and a Brimaz on turn three, those mono red decks aren't going to really stand a chance, I think. So, Yeah, one thing that the Esper Dragon decks and the, the control decks of this standard have, we have seen is just they kind of fold to that mono red Yeah, strategy. and they also like normally fall behind a lot. And I'm not that comfortable with only having Dragon Lord Ojutai as a win condition. That's why I wanted to play Sorin, Ashiox, Elspitz, um, and along with, you know, Seeker Ways and the Tassiger. Right. So I wanted to really diversify my threats. Uh, so that like a crackling doom or you know a foul tongue invitation wouldn't be the end of the game. Right, you got a ton of stuff to fight mono red. You got Seeker of the Way with a bunch of spells that allow you to turn on its prowess. Yeah. Hidden Dragon Slayer. You got Soren to help out your team once you have that. Yeah. Plus just Bremaz in itself. Yeah, and even the early removal like Ultimate Price or Bioblade. Uh, so you really want to be able to control the board against mono red and then land like something big that they can't really deal with, uh, and then take over the game from there. And looking into the sideboard, when you're bringing an Asher and Clerics, Drown and Sorrow, uh, additional Ultimate Price, even a Stratus Dancer, your match versus the aggressive deck's going to be really good. So, Other threats, of course, Ojutai and your Tassiger there to close out games. Yep. But you've got an interesting suite of spells to go along with these creatures. You know, we usually see a lot of dig through times in these Esper builds, but you're going with Treasure Cruise and you have Disdainful Choke playing off the only one blue symbol, correct? Exactly. The mana base, in standard in general, the mana is really good right now. You have fetch lands, you have temples. Uh, my mana is 16 white, 16 black, and 12 blue. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I didn't have any double blue spells. And I think Treasure Cruise is almost as good as Dictor sure. Time. Yeah. So you've got Bio Blight, like you said, you know, Heroes Downfall, you've got all the pinpoint removal. You also have Crux of Fate here. Yeah, Crux of Fate. There's two additional copies of Crux of Fate that originally I didn't have. Um, just because I wanted to be able to sweep the board. And with Dragon Lord Ojutai, it kind of combos nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, another addition was one Valorous Stance. I think Valorous Stance is really good because you could protect your Dragon Lord Ojutai, or you could just like take out a Corsa early in the game. Yeah. So, yeah. It's I nice, like the deck a lot. It's nice seeing Thoughtseize in a deck where you can actually recoup most of that life you lose with all your creatures, exactly, and yeah. you kind of can play both ways. Yeah, uh, actually yesterday I was testing, I'm on turn two Seeker, turn three Thoughtseize, and like, you know, you still gain a life. It's sure. not like losing a life anymore. So definitely really cool, and uh, I don't know, I think that's great if you guys you know, have a chance to try it out. I know Standard's coming to an end, but uh, you know, before Origins, obviously. Right. And uh, But I know there's gonna be a lot of new cards from Origins that are really gonna affect this deck and Sultai in general. So I'm, I'm looking forward to playing Sultai again. So you also have Elspeth, which is kind of another top-in you know, yeah. way to win the game. There's some decks that have a huge problem against Elspeth, like Abzan Aggro or even like Abzan Midrange. Mm -hmm. uh, but Elspeth is also nice in case you do play against like a dragon type deck. They'll play an Ojutai uh, and then they'll be out of resources, so they'll just have to like jam it on turn five or turn six. Then you play an Elspeth, wipe it out, and you know, kind of take over the game from there. Mm -hmm. And Elspeth is great with Soren, obviously. Right. Yeah. Now, your sideboard, you kind of mentioned the clerics and the ways to beat Monored, but you also have some other cool cards in here. You know, you have more discard, you have Drownasar, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But you got an interesting suite of one ofs, starting with Master of the Unseen. Okay, Master of the Unseen, definitely a really good card in any mid range or control matchup. Uh, just if your opponent's not doing anything and you have extra mana, you can start making guys. And like somebody commented in my article, it's another form of uh, attack. Sure. You know, you could attack them with Ashiok, you could attack them in the air, or you could kind of outgrind them with Master of the Unseen. And you could gain life too for right. it. You have yeah. so many 
you know, avenues of attack that they just can't shut it down one way or the other. Yep. And we've seen one of the cards that really hurts the control decks is Mastery of the Unseen. Of course, yeah. Uh, then there's one Dragon Lord Slumgar. Uh, that's really good against like any deck with Planeswalkers or any big deck. They might want to, you know, tap out and do a Dragon Lord uh, Atarka. Sure. And then you can just like steal it or whatnot. Uh, then there's an Utter End to kind of handle some of the Whip of Arabos yeah. or just anything in general. Just catch all. Yeah. Uh, Stratus Dancer comes in against Control and against Mono Red. And then there's an additional ultimate price again against any you know creature type strategy. Okay. So you've been working on the deck for about a week now, talking yep. with the people. What are your good matchups and what are kind of the tougher matchups? Uh, honestly, I think every matchup is 100%. So definitely play this deck. Yes. Um, and maybe your bad matchup is like a vintage type deck. Sure. They're, they're going to combine. Anyone playing turn Black one. Lotus? Yeah, if they're playing Black Lotus, you know, if you bring this to a vintage tournament. You know, maybe go like 4-2, maybe 4-1-1. <laughs> Otherwise, if for standard, you're good. I like this deck. All right, I like yeah. it. Deck looks sweet. We've seen your track record of playing these kinds of decks before, so thanks for joining me here in the sound. No board. problem. Give me a hug, Nick. Come on. Come on. Yeah. All right. Good job. Good job. All right. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Baltimore.